Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. In the past on this channel we have taken in-depth looks at all of the arcade and home console games that were created using the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles license during the prime days of the franchise's popularity. Turtles video games were some of the best in and around during the 80s and early 90s and their impact on the world of gaming is still fondly remembered today. Every entry in the series was novel and brought quirks to the table worth celebrating, even years after this era of the Ninja Turtles ended. While a renaissance in Turtles gaming has only just recently happened, resulting in the likes of Shredder's Revenge and the Cowabunga collection, in the years prior to receiving new Turtles modern retro goodness, the Turtles fan community had our back. In today's long boy of an upload, we are going to be taking a trip back through time to look at some of the interesting and memorable Turtles video games that have been created exclusively by fans, leading to some of the greatest under the radar TMNT games ever produced. So without further ado, let's begin looking at some of these amazing projects. Yeah! In 2003, Senile Team would give us Beats of Rage, a fan-made tribute game to the Streets of Rage series that supplants the original graphics and characters with resources taken from the King of Fighters. To Senile Team's shock, their free-to-play game would quickly be downloaded over a million times, despite news of the game only spreading by word of mouth. The game demonstrated early on how hungry gamers had become for beat-em-ups of old, with the AAA games industry completely ignoring the genre as if it had never existed, nor being popular in the first place. Beats of Rage would lead to the existence of software that would change the world of beat-em-ups forever, with the eventual release of Open Beats of Rage, an open source continuation of the Beats of Rage engine that allows fans and developers to make their own beat-em-ups and even games from other genres. After continuous refinement, today OpenBot is often advertised as the ultimate 2D engine and the most powerful 2D sprite based engine in the world. The royalty free software would open the door for all sorts of possibilities, along with various new games and fan projects. Merso X, a dedicated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, whose game we shall be providing coverage on today, was one of many people who would discover and utilise the wonders of OpenBot. During the past few years, he has developed several retro-style video games for PC, but it is of course his Turtles work that we are focusing on and showcasing right now. Merso states that his original root inspiration behind such a project comes from playing Super Mario All-Stars when he was younger. This was the first time for him and many others where he would see an 8-bit video game get a re-release with music and graphical updates. Ever since that day he dreamed of seeing every NES game receive a SNES style do-over. This would many years later lead to Mercer using OpenBore to begin to create a 16-bit looking remake of the NES game Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project, then later Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, but eventually this would all become something much bigger and more ambitious, Rescue Palooza. Early on in this process, he notes that for characters that appeared in the original NES game, like the Turtles themselves, he would take the original sprites and recolor and edit them in Photoshop. This painstakingly meticulous process was key in maintaining the integral look and feel of the original games, while simultaneously being able to represent each character in a 16-bit art style. While partaking in the laborious endeavour of remaking games, Merso would of course naturally begin to intensely scrutinise the original Turtles games more and more, like many of us taking note of small discrepancies between the titles and other Turtles lore. It was through this process of over-analysing everything that he would make the extremely bold decision that rather than faithfully remastering the titles, he wanted to take the games in his own direction, attempting to create a gameplay experience that would surpass the originals. Merso states, I wanted to have some flexibility in terms of enemy placement and behaviour, but I knew that if I were to take these liberties, the game would stop being a faithful adaptation of the originals. So to make it more fun for myself, development wise, I decided to use the original games just as a template, while creating essentially a new game. For this brave new approach, Merso would attempt to take inspiration not only from all of the classic Turtles games, but also further inspiration from the television animated series too. He would call on the help of huge Ninja Turtles fans, including retro toy blogger Eric Setsky and Suaden John Zelenak. The man with the world's largest Turtles toy collection, who would both assist with implementing accurate Turtles lore elements into the game, as well as the title's story. While as mentioned earlier, many sprites for the game would be created by editing the original sprites in Photoshop. 
Many sprites for this game would need to be created differently, since it encompasses a much larger portion of the Turtles universe of characters than previous games. To help achieve this, Merso X would bring together a team of volunteers to assist with a now huge project, who would do things such as adapt sprites from non-related titles such as Sunsoft's Batman and alter them into Turtles characters. In the end, many sprites for the game would just end up needing to be drawn from scratch, taking inspiration from the animated show. This proved to be the most simplistic process, even when it came to creating sprites of Turtles Tournament Fighter characters for the game. So by June the 13th, 2019, the project was finally finished and released for free on Merso X's website for the world to experience. On the site, the game is described as a free fan-made beat-em-up game based on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. An update and homage to the classic NES title with tons of characters playable for the first time. So now, let us together explore the finished product This is available for all to experience. The game features a very simple, yet perfectly adequate introductory sequence that features the turtles skateboarding through a wall, with it then pan into the game's title. The game's main story mode, which is the first thing initially available to players, can be played up to four player cooperatively. Every player is automatically assigned a turtle each, however they can switch characters as they progress, which we shall get to talking about shortly. Upon starting out in this mode, players are made to play through a short tutorial section where down in the sewers, Splinter explains to the turtles their arsenal of moves. Personally, I do not feel this section is necessary, as the game is simplistic enough that players should be able to work out the controls on their own, especially when you consider that the kind of people who would likely want to play a game like this are veteran gamers who are highly experienced with both the turtles and beat-em-ups anyway, but I guess at least players are 100% guaranteed to be able to understand the controls from the get-go. Once through the tutorial, we get a humorous cutscene that is depicted in a faithful art style to the original games. Where Splinter on a television set mentions that to commemorate 30 years of their rivalry, he's gone to the effort of kidnapping literally every one the turtles know, presenting the player with the goal of rescuing everyone, leading to a full-on rescue palooza, hence the name of the game. Past this point, fans are greeted with a very familiar setting paired with equally familiar music. Players find themselves on an overworld map that has been based on the overworld found in the original 1989 NES game. In Rescue Palooza, this features as a Mega Man style level select, allowing gamers to play the stages in any order they like, instantly bringing something brand new to the Turtles table. You will notice that when you select a stage, say April's building for example, you have the option to switch your character, playing as any turtle you like. This character selection though comes further into play as we progress through the game, which I shall lay more out on shortly. Once action commences, you will notice that this stage has been adapted straight out of the second Turtles NES game, however the building is not on fire this time around. Within the stage, familiar enemies return as well as new ones. The stage, paired with the accompanying music, is dripped in nostalgia. Like in Turtles 2, at the end of the stage, April is trapped in the corner, but a mechanical drill soon comes up through the floor, leading to a boss fight. Rather than taking on just one boss, this time the Turtles take on both members of the gruesome twosome, Rocksteady and Bebop. However, in a convention typical of this fan game, after the fight, the title subverts the audience's expectations. Basically, Shredder emerges from the drill, but instead of managing to capture April like he achieves in the original, this time around she manages to successfully fend the villain off, leading to a happy ending to the area. Now, one of Rescue Palooza's coolest features of all is that after players complete each stage in the title, new fighters are unlocked to players. In this level's instance, April herself, along with both Rocksteady and Bebop 2, become playable. The three new fighters players get for just beating this stage is only one example of the beyond generous amount of extra unlockables that this love letter to the Turtles offers. Upon selecting the next stage you want to play on the overworld map, each of the new fighters are instantly playable on the character select, prior to the action in each level unfolding. On this screen you will also note that every fighter has varied strengths and weaknesses resulting in differences between them away from just aesthetics. In total the game offers a huge variety of stages to play and an incredible 60 different characters to both experiment with and players. The scope on offer with this one is truly ridiculous in terms of different elements pulled in from across the Turtles universe. Encounters with these entities are at times even accompanied by voice clips taken directly from the TV show, further emphasising that vintage Ninja Turtles feel. 
Throughout the playthrough, you will notice so many references to both the cartoon series, the original games and the toy line that are at this point difficult to even keep up with them all. That much Turtles lore was crammed into just this one game. In terms of the stages we get to experience, there are constant moments that will surprise you with one of my favourite implementations being that Merso X managed to achieve the impressive feat of cohesively marrying up elements with the original 1989 Turtles side-scrolling platforming game with a range of Turtles beat-em-ups. This means that on occasion, we get to play through platforming style stages from the NES original such as when we play through a sewer section of the game. But again, things happen that are completely different from normal, such as when we get to take on the pizza monster at the end of the stage, a boss who certainly was not present in the 1989 console classic. The constant mixing up of familiar backdrops to create something new is one of the main appeals of this game to me. For example, one moment you may find you have chosen to play the Key West stage from the Manhattan Project discovering all sorts of new elements, to the next instance being playing the snow-covered park stage which was previously exclusive to the Turtles 2 arcade game for the Nintendo 8-bit platform. The game consistently nods to the source material it was gaming-wise based upon, but never stops introducing further elements celebrating the Turtles franchise. In terms of more elements that were made bespoke for this game, you can on occasion take out enemies who are riding vehicles, then take control of said vehicles yourself. Think of this as exactly the same as the rideable steeds mechanic that can be found in Golden Axe. A very similar feature was added to this game by allowing players to ride these. In terms of combat, which is mentioned in the game's tutorial, I would say it is certainly stronger than any that can be found in the actual NES original games. However, it does not feel quite as fluid as the likes of Turtles in Time or the Hyperstone Heist. Characters can do most of the things you expect, walk, run, jump and attack, however special moves are possible too with a simple tap of a button when the special move meter is filled up. These meters slowly refill after each use. In terms of the 60 playable characters, some are certainly more functional than others and I would not call the lineup exactly balanced. However personally, I find this modern obsession with balancing characters in games and making them all equal a bit over the top anyway. Life is not fair or balanced, so why should our games be that way? Give me some overpowered fighters and some lame ducks any day over a selection of fighters where every one of them is an equal. Variety is the spice of life, after all. Between certain stages, there are bonus sections to play through, which are introduced by Cuddly the Cowlick from the Turtles comic books, a trans-dimensional being who looks like a floating cowhead. These stages allow players to earn extra lives, improving the chances of beating the game. Completing story mode then unlocks arcade mode, a play mode that allows players to play in an arcade style session as any of the 60 fighters in the game, giving gamers plenty of replayability when it comes to this fan made experience. With the title's extreme depth of characters and stages to play through, I could break down and overanalyze every detail in this video forever. However, I feel that Rescue Palooza has enough warranted cameos and surprises that I will leave it up to you to explore many of them for yourself. After all, with this being a free-to-play game, all of you watching today have the opportunity to do so. The game would astound many when it first popped up online, including gaming media sources, so let's check out what they had to say. Retrospect.com stated that the most outrageous thing of all is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza is a well-conceived and made game that tugs heavily on all things nostalgic about the heroes in a half shell, yet is completely free to boot. It's a passion project that's sure to make you relive and re-experience the joys of your youthful interests. The game is most definitely a love letter that is written both to and from the fans. Kotaku with our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza has it all. Foot soldiers, the party wagon, lesser known mutant antagonists, ground chuck and dirtbag, and best of all the fan made PC game is free to download. Den of Geek would praise the game, relating it to the market needing more quality beat em ups in 2019, stating, There's never enough modern games in the genre on the market, and there's certainly never enough of them that recreate the surprising quality of so many great Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat em ups of the past. 
When it comes to Rescue Palooza, the result is as impressive as it is welcome. Across the board, Rescue Palooza was welcomed and praised by fans and journalists alike, but perhaps without playing this yourself yet, you may be wondering how well this game holds up against the originals. Now, after playing all of them, the original titles and this fan game, it is actually a rather tough question to answer, as although on the surface the game looks very similar, the changes make a big enough difference for Rescue Palooza to feel unlike any Turtles game you've played before. I would say overall it feels completely different to the likes of the actual Turtles arcade games and what appeared on the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, with gameplay certainly being framed closer around the trilogy of Turtles games that appeared on the NES. While we get plenty of nods in the game to the 1989 original, I would go as far to say as they are literally just that, as the game has little mechanically in common with that title. For example, the overworld map is just a level select in this instance, and we never need to cycle between characters mid-play to strategically make it through challenges. So I would say that gameplay wise, it certainly feels more like Turtles 2 and 3 on the NES rather than anything else which makes perfect sense as well, considering in its earliest development stages that those were the games that Merso X was trying to replicate. So the easiest way to describe it is the greatest ever Turtles 2 and 3 on the NES style Turtles game, if that makes any sense to you. So to conclude this chunk of the video, I highly highly recommend that you give this one a go. But first, I have for you plenty more Turtles fan game goodness to show you. So let's get stuck in further. Yeah! When it comes to the world of the classic era of the Ninja Turtles, as mentioned earlier, there are plenty of great games featuring this awesome foursome that are out there to appreciate. While probably the arcade and home console titles appear to receive the most love and admiration today, the brand would also see the release of an amazing little trilogy of games on the 8-bit monochrome Nintendo Game Boy. Perhaps it is the lack of colour with these games and overall simplicity compared to their home console counterparts that results today in these games' stronger points being somewhat undersung. But there is no denying that each of them did bring something different to Nintendo's popular handheld system. While most do not give these titles perhaps the appreciation they deserve, a gentleman by the name of Oscar Celestini obviously feels quite differently. Oscar, a man who was born in Italy in 1984, grew up both watching the Turtles and playing the Game Boy, eventually choosing the interesting career choices of working as a cartoonist, colorist illustrator, and someone who dabbles in both pixel art and video game development. The man has worked for the likes of DC Comics and others under his belt, but it would be this indie game developer's Turtles passion project that grabbed my attention to inspire me to make this video today. You see, Oscar had made the rather unique decision to create a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game for PC that features graphics that are inspired by those that could be found on the Game Boy. Oscar explains that he has loved the Turtles since he was just 5 years old, and felt this was a great way to both celebrate and express his love for the franchise. The man envisioned a simple old school platformer with graphics that offered just four colours on the screen in order to try and give it that old school Game Boy sort of feel. Now for me personally, this was one of those games that I discovered by accident through browsing on the information superhighway. At first glance, looking at this project, it simply led me to assume it had never actually been completed as it is somewhat rare to try and look up long plays or let's play footage of a game on YouTube and get no results in return. Clicking Oscar's very own video game trailer though provided me with a download link necessary to access the full game and what a fun little title Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga would actually be. The moment you boot this game up, the game's great music created by Gianluca Papalado begins to blast out of the PC speakers, instantly suggesting that players may be in for a treat. The game offers a basic Game Boy-esque introduction that depicts the turtles in their live action movie form. An interesting stylistic choice for the title, considering none of the big games released in the 90s opted to feature the Turtles movie designs over the likes of either their comic book or animated TV show counterparts. 
Oscar Celestini comments that he opted to create all the sprites and backgrounds for the game in line with the style of a 1990 movie, an artistic decision that he made purely on the basis that this piece of Turtles media was his all-time favourite. Between stages, there are even cutscenes that help progress the story, with the first of these suggesting that Shredder has kidnapped Splinter. The images that were collated for the game, along with the title's unique story, were both created for the game by Simone Granata. As for this title's gameplay, as mentioned earlier, the game offers good, wholesome, solid 2D side-scrolling fun, similar to that of which can be found in the first two Turtles Game Boy games from back in the day. Although, with it being a Game Boy inspired PC game, the creator did make some choices to make the title feel more comfortable when being played on modern hardware. For example, the game plays in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is of course the perfect shape for modern PC screens, and gamers are given a choice of visual styles between black and white, green monochrome, or a choice of whether or not to add arcade like scan lines. Personally, for most of my play experience, I opted to play Scanline 3 in monochrome green, as that style choice felt the most Game Boy like to me, so therefore I was most comfortable with those particular visuals. The game takes an obvious leaf out of many previous Ninja Turtles video game playbooks, in that players have the ability to switch between all four turtles at any point during a stage. Like the original Turtles NES game back in the day, each of the heroes in House Shells have their own independent life bars, so when one is running low on health, it is often wise to switch one out for another to avoid a game over. The Turtles appear to vary in that they each have a different weapon with slightly varying reaches. However, from my observations, the differences were mainly aesthetic. Controlling the green team, players must platform through five different stages with even bonus levels in between, all of which we are going to cover now. When beginning to move through the game's first stage, players will likely quickly note that they are in the sewers, and that there are foot soldiers and mousers laced through the level that can be taken out by the use of one quick, satisfying slash. Gamers with a keen ear will notice the epic music that can be heard in the background, which is an awesome remix of the first stage music from the original 1989 NES Turtles game, offering up an awesome new chiptune rendition. In fact, most of the great music in this game are updated tracks from Turtles games of the past. It is awesome to hear and very nostalgic. Throughout the stage, there are multiple layers of platforming and ladders to ascend. These platforms are littered with pickups and collectibles, with some being located in smashable crates. Items you can collect include ninja stars that can be thrown, pizzas that of course replenish health, and turtle shells that give players additional points. There are also 20 ooze canisters that can be found throughout the entire game, that can be gathered as an additional challenge for those who have experience playing this one. At the end of the first stage, players have the opportunity to take on aerial laser shooting opponent Baxter Stockman, who does not offer too much of a challenge. Between stages, as mentioned earlier, the game also features mini-games. These bonus levels are beatable by successfully throwing ninja stars at oncoming foot soldiers for 30 straight seconds. If players are able to keep this momentum up for a solid half a minute, they are awarded with a whole pizza that sees their entire team's health replenished. This much needed prize makes these bonus levels particularly tense, especially nearing the end of a game, where getting life back can feel like a make or break situation. Knowing that every time I won it increased my chances of beating the game, I certainly got a lovely dopamine hit every time I completed one of these. There is also a stage that features a Manhattan skyscraper theme that requires a lot more jumping than the first level, including needing to jump over bonfires and later jumping from actual building to building. This stage culminates in a boss fight against the iconic duo of Rocksteady and Bebop, the bumbling but slightly more threatening version of Bulk and Skull. The game's challenge steps up massively on stage 3, where I gained my first few game overs throughout the stage. The reason as to why this area is more death inducing than those seen previously is that the area is laced with ninja traps, such as spikes that shoot through the floors and walls, resulting in the creation of lots of turtles kebab skewers for players who don't know what they are doing. Navigating to the end of this portion though allows players to encounter a boss battle against franchise favourite Slash, who is always cool to see. 
Stage 4 sees gamers move through a more mountainous region, which sees the introduction of laser shooting rock soldiers into the game, which culminates with a boss battle against Krang, before finally moving on to the fifth and final stage, which of course is the legendary Technodrome. The last challenge setting of various Turtles games from the classic era of the franchise. As one would expect, there are more traps and enemies here than any other place in the game, with even maze-like elements that involve teleportation placed within to cause a spot of disorientation in the final throes of this awesome little game. The last level also marks the only stage in the game where two separate boss battles take place, the first of which is a rematch against Krang, this time using his android body, then finally against the franchise's primary antagonist, Shredder himself who rather annoyingly killed me on my first attempt, so I had to play this one credit game from scratch all over again. I must say though, I did appreciate the lack of respawns, as overall I feel it added to the game's tension, and it was fun memorising the patterns in order to beat this relatively short fan-made experience. All in all, I must say that I was thoroughly impressed with what Oscar Celestini and his small team were able to come up with, creating a rather interesting passion project which you can feel the love exuding from. I enjoyed every minute of this one, and I am quite frankly baffled it has not been talked about more in the past. The game seems to have been completed back in May 2018, and appears to have had very little in the way of media coverage. In fact, as mentioned near the beginning of this video, I seem to be the first YouTuber, to my knowledge at least, to cover this game in any capacity whatsoever, as there aren't even any Let's Plays or Long Plays up that feature the game. Bearing all of this in mind, this title in my opinion is the very definition of a hidden gem, and considering that Oscar has made it free for all to play, I jolly well think people should be experiencing this game. Overall, I think it's a wonderful little title that brought a smile to my face. There is certainly a lot of choice out there at present, with things seemingly only getting better. With all of this said, it is time to talk about yet another one of these efforts in the form of Recolored and Extended, another massive fan project, this time of which was created around building on and improving Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 for the NES. While the NES game was an 8-bit conversion of the hugely popular arcade game, Recolored and Extended on the other hand seemed like it took a lot of influence from the NES port of the title, then massively built on it and improved it further, essentially morphing it into an all-new nostalgic feeling experience. For this video, providing coverage of the game, I nipped over to the Chrono Crash forums and made the effort to catch up with the developer of the title so that I could provide you all with an even more in-depth scoop than usual. Recolored and Extended was created by a forum poster known as Gabotico, a man who grew up in Venezuela who moved to Boston, Massachusetts when he was 19 years old. The creator commented that he loved his childhood and would first encounter video games around a friend's house who happened to own an Atari VCS. Gabatico loved the concept of being able to interact with something on the television screen and drew parallels between playing the system and playing with action figures, only with the Atari you never had to make the sound effects for the play yourself. He mentions that the first system he owned himself was a device he referred to as a Famicom, a system in his country that they used to call the Japanese Nintendo, which reading between the lines I assume he is talking about some kind of 8-bit Famiclone console. Apart from being into gaming as a youngster, Gabatico always had an affinity for art, well drawing more specifically which made him ponder the idea of one day getting into animation. Regularly drawing and playing video games, the Venezuelan child dreamed of creating a video game of his very own so that he could marry up his interests all together. As he grew older and internet usage became more prevalent, Gabotico discovered something online that would absolutely blow his mind, a mashup between Street Fighter and Final Fight, two of his favourite video games ever. This title is what we now know today as a Mugen game, and had been created for the PC using the Mugen engine. What the future Turtles dev was even more amazed with was that he soon realised that he could download and add characters to the game, many that had been created by fellow video game fans. Finding love from this, it was only a matter of time before he was attempting to make his own characters with Mugen, but lacked the experience and expertise at the time to successfully pull this off. 
Later, Gabatico would be one of the huge number of people who would download Beats of Rage, the Streets of Rage-like experience that uses assets from the King of Fighters series. As covered many times on this channel before, this would lead to the creation of Open Beats of Rage, the very program that Turtles recolored and extended would later be created in. The fan project lead comments that Open Ball was literally a dream come true and was such a great engine that creators can use completely for free. So he would commence work on drawing some sprites that he could use in an Open Ball game of his own. A stumbling block he quickly ran into though was that while he wanted to use his own sprites, he didn't really know anything about animation, despite his interest in the subject. This would mean it would take him forever to create a basic walk animation for characters in the game. After what he refers to as a very, very slow period of progress, he finally was able to demonstrate what he had managed to produce so far within a YouTube video to fellow forum posters who had an interest in open bore. Gabo Tico's first effort, uploaded to the video sharing platform in January 2020, shows a beautiful hand-drawn demonstration of a game that is clearly heavily inspired by the original 1980s Turtles comic book series. The demo starts off by showing off some hand-drawn comic book panels that he created before showcasing beat-em-up action taking place through visually stunning streets and sewers. There was no doubt about it that this man clearly had talent, and I would kill to see this demo fully realised into a full open board game one day. Forum posters and YouTube users were generally impressed with the game and offered all sorts of feedback. However, the developer notes that one particular comment would end up making the most impact. He states that a YouTube user by the name of Valentino the Inferno Reyes, or something at least close to that name, suggested that he make a remake of Ninja Turtles 2 the arcade game that was ported to the NES. At first, Gabatico was not particularly interested in such a concept, as this would clearly entail a visual step down from the game he had already been working on. However, he would soon warm to the idea based on the fact that it was a much more achievable goal. He comments that the NES sprites were in need of improvement and quickly found that he could create more detailed and colourful alternatives that were still faithful to the era of graphical presentation. The decision was made to attempt to make this game a reality as soon as he realised how much more simple the animation would be to create for this alternative project. So recoloured and extended was officially on. A huge benefit to this new plan was that it presented Gabatico with the perfect opportunity in order to focus on creating a mechanically sound open board game, rather than spending all of his hours producing sprites and animations completely from scratch. The technique that he would take advantage of to give his new game a distinct look would of course be to recolour all of the Turtles 2 sprites, but to build on this further he would also give each of them a black outline, giving them a more cartoon aesthetic than what had been achieved previously. The recolouring would include making the Turtles shells brown, since the NES version of the game features Turtles who had shells that were the same colour as their skin. To give the game extra visual appeal, the artist would also separate the character's eyes, as in the Nintendo game, the turtle's eyes were so close together that each sprite looks like a cyclops, which always bothered him as a child. So, as work continued to progress on his remake of Turtles 2, another big Turtles fan project would be announced, a title we have of course covered before on this channel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Rescue Palooza. Gabatico was browsing through forum threads showing screenshots for this future impressive game that would also take a lot of inspiration from the NES era of Turtles games. He comments that he loved this game's superb Super Nintendo look and thus felt inspired to put further detail into sprites of his own fan-made game. Here he would begin recolouring sprites giving them a sort of cell shaded visual, bringing them further in line with the series 80s cartoon. It was of course only a matter of time before he was able to play the first Rescue Palooza demo. He quickly found that it was not just the visuals that made the game fantastic, but that the creator, Merso, had gone as far as to give the characters from the game their moves from both Turtles 2 and even Turtles 3. This in turn added a lot of depth to the gameplay. Taking inspiration from this, Gabatico would apply the same mechanics to his mod, but then decided to go one step further by adding gameplay mechanics from Turtles in Time into the mix too. 
his all-time favourite Turtles game in terms of play. To be able to pull this off, it would require him to painstakingly draw all new sprites for the game from scratch, ones of which that were in line with the visual style of the ones he had already created. While on a roll, he would even go one step further in the moves and sprite department by creating a Hadouken-like move that was inspired by a manoeuvre that can be found in Turtles Tournament Fighter for the Super Nintendo implementing elements of various Turtles entries into a fan game that was originally intended to be built just around Turtles 2. It was only a matter of time before Gabatico would begin to incorporate stages from a range of Turtles games as well as completely new ones too, making the title far more than just a recolor, but a full-on extension, hence the name Recolored and Extended. As much as he enjoyed the original game from Konami, there were so many Turtles characters that he loved as a child that never made it into any of the official games. In fact, he recalls looking back at action figures and various characters thinking that he would like to fight this guy in a game or play as Master Splinter. Now making his own game, he could finally bring some of these ideas into reality. This would ultimately result in a huge game with a cornucopia of characters to play as, all laced with dialogue and cutscenes to help progress the game's story. The game is so massive that breaking down the stages and characters available in this one bit by bit would take forever, so I am hoping a lot of the gameplay footage I am showcasing throughout this video will do a lot of the talking for me, and encourage you to try this game out for yourself. The game is an absolutely huge love letter to not only classic Turtles video games, but the classic era of the Turtles franchise overall. This results in a title that is arguably as impressive as Rescue Palooza, and thus deserves its praises sung from the heavens. Like the original 1989 Turtles arcade game, this awesome fan project even supports 4 player cooperative play, a great feature that was obviously lacking and likely impossible to place in any of the 8-bit Turtles games from back in the NES days. This game just rigs of cool, or should I say, radical. Amongst all of this title's stages and features, I have to comment on how surreal it is to see 8-bit recreations of stages from the likes of Turtles in Time. Stages we have obviously only ever seen previously in the arcades and on the Super Nintendo. The level of effort that has been put into all of this is superb, and stuff like this is definitive proof that the title is certainly a lot more than just a recolor. Another interesting feature this game includes is that as players progress through the story, they can unlock more and more different playable characters as they make their way through the game. This has some cool moments and hilarious fourth wall breaking moments. For example, after playing as KC Jones and destroying this massive mech being controlled by Krang, a turtle comments that somehow he feels their paths with KC Jones will cross again, only to have KC pop up on the screen to inform the turtles that somehow I have a feeling you're right, I'm probably going to be a playable character after this level. It is hilarious moments like this that bring a sense of humour to the game that feels in line with the Turtles franchise from the classic period, adding to the overall level of authenticity that this game contains. Speaking with Gabatica about the making of this game, he mentions that one of the main challenges that he faced when building the title was with the game's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 NES-like mode, one of the two modes of play the game contains. He states that since at the game's heart it is pretty much a remake of an NES game, he wanted the whole experience to feel familiar to players. This would include the way enemies in the game spawned, which proved to be a tough part of the game's development process. As we know, he was a relative rookie to open bore at the start of this endeavour, so had a hard time getting foot soldiers to spawn in his title in the same ways that they do in the original game. For example, breaking through windows, kicking down doors, or coming from manholes. Getting objects such as fire hydrants or parking meters to function also proved a challenge, since they needed to be objects that players could interact with, but also do damage to enemies with. This dual functionality is not often something players think about when playing a game, but apparently it is very tough for developers to pull off, especially with a lack of experience. Still, Gabatico would be happy with the finished product that he managed to come up with, his favourite thing about his game being that he was able to include so many different playable characters that he did not have access to in Turtles 2 as a kid. Further to this, he enjoyed including extra enemies who had previously only appeared in the likes of comic books, the cartoon, or action figures, so loved bringing these characters into the world of gaming. 
Another feature that he particularly liked about the game is the story, and that it manages to pretty much cover the entirety of the first season of the show, which he feels makes the game feel a lot closer to that of the cartoon. Looking at this title, there is no denying how impressive this fan project is, and the level of passion that has been poured into the work in terms of the creator's love for the turtles, video games, and well, art in general. Lots of love is here and it's all been married up perfectly. All of this may have you wondering what is next for this gentleman, and speaking to him personally, he was able to inform me that he is currently working on a game where he finally has an opportunity to use characters he created himself. Finally revisiting the Mugen engine in an attempt to make his own Street Fighter-like fighting game. Fairly recently, he also started working on a game based on the Masters of the Universe, and is using Open Ball to create a game that plays like a platformer. This time taking gameplay influence from the likes of the NES Ninja Gaiden game and its Castlevania titles. Further to all of this, he has experimented with a Ranma game to see how close he could get to making a Street Fighter-like game using just open bore, but ultimately would switch to Mugen instead. As exciting and interesting as some of these ideas and concepts may be though, the recolored and extended game is already available to download and play for all to enjoy. While both of these projects are amazing in their own right, gameplay wise they have more in common with the 8-bit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games than they do with the more popular entries from the series. By far the two most fondly remembered Turtles games are the original Turtles arcade game and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time also simply abbreviated to be known as TIT. You'll be pleased to know that the focus of today, Red Sky Battle, plays like the latter, so this could very well be the extra Turtles experience that many of you are perhaps looking for. To fully understand the Red Sky Battle though, we first have to mention the creation of another Turtles fan game, known as Wrath of the Shredder, from which I can see it began development around 2007. The game's creator, going by the username of BonusJZ, made a post on Technodrome forums in April of that year, stating that his game was 95% complete and would be compatible with PC, Windows and other formats. Available on YouTube are recent playthroughs of this game, but to put it simply, this is a title that features old school classic era sprite work, but mixes it with stage background assets from much newer Turtles games i.e. the Turtles video games that were made available on the Game Boy Advance. In fact, the first stage background in The Wrath of Shredder is from the 2007 GBA game by Ubisoft, a title that came out the very same year that this fan game was created. With regards to the GBA title, I would love to cover it in detail on here in the future, as many who have played it consider it to be one of the greatest Turtles games ever made. The issue for me though is because it does not feature classic era sprite work, I fear that if I made a standalone video on such a game, I do not have the correct audience base installed to this channel for enough of you to actually care. I already have evidence of this from when I uploaded a video on the 2003 Turtles GBA game, the only Turtles video in my sprawling series that has not performed well views wise. It appears that most of you oldies are a stubborn bunch, and if the Turtles do not look like this, it's not your nostalgia, so you don't click. But to put into perspective how much of an important game that Ubisoft's 2007 Turtles game was, the development team who worked on the game would consist of many of the same staff who would go on to create Scott Pilgrim vs The World, a title many consider one of the best beat'em up video games ever made, even though the genre was completely out of fashion at the time that the game was made available to the market. Speaking of this team, the same staff are being used to create the upcoming Shredder's Revenge game, so with both the 2007 Turtles game under their belt and Scott Pilgrim vs The World, expectations are extremely high that the first official game celebrating the classic era of the franchise since the mid-90s is indeed going to be a bit special. Now in regards to the 2007 fan game, The Wrath of Shredder, Bonus JZ's 8 minute preview of the game, according to a forum post, would end up being pulled from YouTube due to the content reportedly being blocked by Lionsgate. Which is not that surprising to be fair, especially considering that assets were used for the title from a new to the market game. While playable versions of the game were available to play online as of now, this fan game inspired by the Turtles would spawn yet another fan game 
inspired by the Turtles, which is how the game Red Sky Battle would come into existence. Technodrome forum posts from 2011 discussing this new fan project note that someone in Russia would decide to pick up Raffle Shredder where bonus JZ had left off, creating another fan game in its image. This would be confirmed by another user by the name of Pro Igrok, explaining that it was his game and stumbled across people discussing his work through Google. He would explain that Red Sky Battle was quickly spreading in terms of popularity, not only through Russia, but within Ukraine and Belarus too. The Turtles fan project that came from Russia with Love is described by Pro Igrok to have been developed exclusively for personal computers as there was no time to work at console versions. To create the game, he would use materials from many different Turtles games from the classic era, as well as of course the high quality Ubisoft 2007 GBA game. Mixing all of these elements together, he felt that he could create something new and interesting. He reveals that in the end, he got tired of waiting for the bonus JZ Turtles project, so would simply just make his own Turtles game, but with blackjack and hookers. Well, I made the last part up, but you get the gist. To give you a quick rundown of how Pro Igrok described his project in 2011, he states that he wanted to create a project that adhered to the original concept of the classic era of Ninja Turtles, something which I have mentioned in this video that the corporate gaming world have only just seemed to realise is in demand as of now. Ten years prior though, Igrok was here presenting a game that featured all graphics in a 16-bit palette featuring playable characters made in the style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time, the most celebrated game in the entire series. He would try to create stages with many layers and try to recreate the AI as close as possible to Turtles in Time. To top it off, he would add new life bars and include features such as allowing Donatello to perform charge attacks and enabling the Turtles to be able to execute roundhouse kicks against enemies. This means players can protect themselves when enemies are attacking from both sides. Channeling more arcade fun, he would create a skateboard stage and include a block feature to protect players against certain attacks. He would also add the classic damage combo system and include original sounds created by a user who goes by the name of Smoke. Ground air and mixed combo moves were also added as well as original fonts, a game menu, etc. To give the game an edge of replayability, there are also a number of unlockables included, from hidden playable characters to an additional survival mode. A decent amount of effort appears to have been put into this passion project. Red Sky Battle, like the Wrath of Shredder before it, brings classic era action in its opening stage into the stunning Ubisoft 2007 Turtles environment, allowing for nostalgic action in an atmosphere that many appreciators of the golden era of the franchise would have never seen before. There are foot soldiers aplenty to take out, many who enter the scene in convertibles and amusingly the walls of the buildings are often covered by posters promoting the Sega Dreamcast and Xbox of all things. There is a lot going on in this cool opening stage and I have to say I do appreciate a combo count being present when taking on foes, a feature that was certainly not a thing in the franchise's games during the 80s and 90s. The opening stage culminates in a boss fight against familiar opponent Rocksteady. Another new feature to the game that certainly was not around in Turtles Arcade or Tit is after completing a stage being given a choice of branching paths like say in Final Fight 3 or Golden Axe 3. One route for example provides the player with a sewer surfing like experience riding a hoverboard through a train underground network, nicking more high quality backgrounds from the GBA. Well, and foregrounds in this instance too, as trains often pass the scene in front of the playable characters. See the sort of cool stages we were missing out on if we were too stubborn to move past the classic era? This stage finishes off with a boss fight against an opponent from the Super Nintendo version of Turtles in Time, the Rat King. Moving back to the first stage, if gamers opt to choose the other route, gamers are taken down into the sewers, where by the looks of things, the stage background of this level seems to have been pinched from the 2003 GBA Turtles game. You know, the games I made a video about, which only a few of you actually watched. No, I am not bitter about this at all. Not me, no no no, but the stage contains typical brawler action, taking out foot soldiers and mousers before eventually taking on Leatherhead, another boss from the Tit game. Stage 3 takes place out on the streets with those drill thingies from the Turtles Arcade game coming through the floor, unleashing wave after wave of foot soldiers against our heroes. This stage is also notable for unleashing biking opponents against the player with a boss fight against a bebop to close out of the level's action. Nice. 
Next we are brought to Further Street. These ones however are from one of the classic entry games, rather than the GBA era. A rainbow of foot soldier variants must continue to be contested against before further familiar foe begin to pop up throughout the stage too. Midway through this one a scene play showing Rocksteady, Bebop and Shredder himself holding April O'Neil hostage before a boss battle commences against the combined forces of Rocksteady and Bebop within the interior of a supermarket. Or as the French say, Supermarché. Defeating them leads to another cutscene depicting April's rescue before moving on to the next stage, giving us another awesome looking Ubisoft environment, this time atop building rooftops. Seeing these stages within the game really shows off how awesome these assets look, potentially even more beautiful than the environments from the 2D games that came before it. It is just more old school beat em up action from here with this stage ending with a fight against Metalhead. If players have chosen a different route after the one on one fight with Bebop earlier, then they could have advanced into this GBA game diner instead, where the action is made more realistic by including the addition of civilians hiding behind counters and under tables. Good stuff. Like the other route the players have the option to take, April and Neil must be rescued by defeating Rocksteady and Bebop together. The next stage involves riding atop a truck as a fight commences atop it, with a red sky looming in the background. One could say that a red sky battle is going on. Yeah. Again, like other stages and beat em ups in general, many ways of opponents must be beaten, culminating with a boss fight, in this stage's instance against the aerial Baxter Stockman. There is also a junkyard stage where it looks exactly like it sounds with even steamrollers that can flatten our green chums, with players eventually moving the action to the interior of a warehouse where a boss fight takes place against Razor. Stage 7 moves action to a rainy street showing off more Ubisoft era beauty. Like other levels, the enemy wave ferocity continues to intensify as players approach the end of the game. This one ends with a fight against Metalhead who has Slash with him this time too, offering a tougher challenge than previously. But yeah, for this game as far as I can tell this is indeed in fact the final challenge. All in all rounding off a play experience that offers a bit of classic style turtles action reworked with many modern assets to bring us something slightly different. From what I can see online since the release of this game, in more recent years the game's creator has made a new Red Sky project containing new playable characters, updated old characters, new level graphics, music and sound, character sprites and a new final boss challenge. So maybe we will look at that game down the line on here too. Let me know if you want that one. To summarise today's video, if you are desperate for some old school Turtles arcade like action and are simply too excited to wait for the brand new game from Detonu, then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Red Sky Battle may be the perfect video game for you to try out during the meantime. If there are two things that I know my audience loves, or well at least the sort of things that people like who YouTube actually decide to promote my videos towards, these things would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Streets of Rage. There is no doubt that you have memories with regards to these two properties. Whether it be playing part of the classic Streets of Rage trilogy on Sega machines or enjoying the Turtles in its plethora of different media forms, these brands would undoubtedly make huge impacts on the pop culture of the period. In fact, with regards to Turtles' many successes, they would even conquer the world of video games in this time frame, with memorable games being published for the arcades, handhelds, home computers and of course home consoles. The key element though that will always make Turtles and Streets of Rage synonymous with each other is the fact that these two brands would deliver the quintessential beat em up console experiences with Streets of Rage 2 often being cited as the greatest Sega Mega Drive game from the genre and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time often being referenced as the greatest Super Nintendo game of its kind. Turtles and Streets of Rage pretty much symbolised two sides of the same coin within the greatest of console wars, even if the Mega Drive would later get its own Turtles beat up anyway, in the form of Hyperstone Heist, which is pretty great in its own right. For this reason, many have always dreamed of a crossover beat em up in which both of these worlds could collide, which thanks to the online modding community, a refined fan made experience has been created in order to finally make this dream possible. A few years ago a hack of Streets of Rage 2 by an internet user known as Cars J would surface named Streets of Rage TMNT Edition, which allowed gamers to play as the Ninja Turtles within the classic game. 
This 2016 effort would literally replace the famous foursome from Streets of Rage 2 with the heroes in a house shell, allowing gamers to play as the turtles in this brawling affair for the first time. Moving into the future, this concept would be built upon further with a hack of this hack, known as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles of Rage. This edition of the game by an uploader known as Iskaeli would combine elements into the playthrough from yet another Streets of Rage 2 fan hack, known as Streets of Rage 2 Restoration. Now, what was Streets of Rage 2 Restoration you may ask? Well, with this project it would restore elements into Streets of Rage 2 that had been removed previously from the original Japanese version of the game known as Bare Knuckle 2, most of which were removed for censorship purposes. So, Iskaeli's Turtles Streets of Rage game includes Bare Knuckle 2 elements such as the previously removed Mr X's cigar. Other subtle changes include the likes of changing enemies' names to their original Japanese counterparts, such as Gaussia, Galuda and Moskite to Garcia, Garuda and Mosquito. This was because Sega had mistranslated their names in all versions of the game previously. Bloody idiots. The hack also changed the music on the pirate ship stage to the unused Little Money Avenue music track. This version of the game would also include a new text scroll which states that a year after the first rage, Mr. X has kidnapped Adam in the hopes of trapping and ruthlessly murdering Blaze and Axel. Along with Adam's brother, Skate, and fellow Rager Max, the Streets of Rage team follows four radical reptiles on their quest to save April Earth, uh, Adam. Will the heroes in a half shell fly off towards the sun victoriously, or will the Syndicate prove more capable and deadly than the Foot Clan? Continuing to bring the game further in line with the Turtles, changes would be made, for example, finally switching out the original Streets of Rage 2 title in favour of a brand new Turtles one and bringing in portraits from the Super Nintendo version of Turtles in Time and adding them to the player select screen. New shadowing would also be applied to the game to make the movement of the turtle sprites appear more natural and in flow with Streets of Rage 2 gameplay. New setups to air juggle combos was also made possible, but by 2019 the game had been refined further, leading to a version of the game known as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles of Rage Remix. The text scroll in this one would outline that a year after their first battle with the Syndicate, the original Ragers and their city have enjoyed 365 days of peace, but nothing lasts forever. Mr X has come back with a vengeance, going toe to toe against not only the ragtag team of Max, Axel, Blaze and Skate, but also at least once against the fearsome foursome the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Having last suffered setbacks at the hands of the Green Machine, the Syndicate has reared his ugly head once again. Mr X challenges Mike, Leo, Donnie and Raph to a final battle for the city, leaving them unaware that he's made an alliance with one of their toughest foes. Will the heroes in a half shell topple the demonic duo of Mr X and one Oroku Saki, or will the syndicate overrun the turtles and finally prevail? As this version of the game suggests, this hack by Iskaeli and Double Z remixes the previous offerings. Changes include a couple of music tracks being switched out to provide more of a sense of urgency in the final stage of the game. A recoloured Donatello and duplicates of each turtle were also recoloured for the dual mode, bringing them closer to their 80s cartoon counterparts. Further to this, rebalancing was applied to each electable fighter to make each of them even more even. Communism, yeah. More subtle changes were also made, such as revisions to the game's enemies increasing the difficulty slightly and a homage was made more blatant within the game to an old school WWF wrestler. In a strange twist for a particular difficulty setting, both Garcia and Donovan are hilariously promoted from jobbers to mini bosses and Modus Savak would tweak the game to allow each player to run in all directions as of now. On top of everything else, more juggle combos were added and most strikingly, Shiva is gone from the game allowing Mr X to now be protected by Turtles antagonist Shredder, allowing for a much more appropriate boss encounter. Finally, this brings us around to up until this point the most recent revision of the game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles of Rage, the final shell shot, which includes what are known as the reshelled patches, allowing for better sound for the game when played on devices such as Everdrives or the Terra Onion, which allows this chimera to be experienced on actual real Sega hardware. 
This most recent set of modifications adds yet another text scroll outlining that Mr X and the Syndicate have fallen at the hands of those radical reptiles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Furious with his latest failure to control the city, X enlists one Shredder to capture the fearsome foursome's greatest ally, April O'Neil. Rage in their hearts and pizza in their bellies, the turtles jump into action, dead set on putting an end to Mr. X's tyranny once and for all, and punish the Shredder for being complicit in the Syndicate's nefarious misdeeds as well. As for the main changes, a throwback to the old 90s arcade splash screen starts off your gaming experience, and there are now six sequence endings specific to the game. This is the first time such a feature has been applied to any Streets of Rage 2 hacks. These endings include redesigned images that were originally found in sources such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 and 3 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, bringing them over to the Mega Drive. More excitingly, Rocksteady and Bebop have joined Mr. X's Syndicate, making them now bosses in this Streets of Rage 2 hack. This not only marks their arrival in Streets of Rage, but also Bebop's first appearance on the Mega Drive, considering he was absent in the Hypestone Heist and the system's tournament fighter. An attract mode would also be added to the game to complement the new ending sequence, and apples have finally been removed from the game in favour of carbalicious slices of pizza. For the icing on the cake, or should I say, pineapple on the pizza, Mikey's iconic Pizza Time soundbite from other Turtles games is finally added to this affair, for every time he grabs a slice of heaven. All in all, while on the surface this title may look like Streets of Rage 2 with the characters switched out for the Turtles, as you can now see from all we have been through today, the changes run a lot deeper than that, with more substantial differences between the games becoming evident upon a better look. It is quite staggering to see the amount of love and effort that has been poured into this endeavour, creating something both quirky and functional simultaneously. So if you were a typical late 80s or early 90s kid who grew up with both of these great properties, now it is finally the right time to play a game that combines them as one. Whether you prefer Turtles in Time or Streets of Rage 2, it is difficult not to smile at this amazing love letter. So I hope you enjoyed this look back at some of these amazing Turtles fan projects. If you enjoyed this video then make sure you subscribe and why not check out my playlist covering the history of all of the classic games in the Turtles series. Cheerio!